Hey, cuties. It's everyone's favorite time of the year again. Christmas, you say? Never heard of her. No, uh, of course they mean anniversary. You can't have an anniversary without event summon reprints. There's a lot today, so buckle up. Right off the bat, Valentine Snow Fight. Yoritoro! He stands alone in the frigid wasteland of calm clearing units being designed for tunnel maps, holding up the flag as the only decent unit that is designed for farming in wide maps without just relying on a board wiper. You can boil him down to two rolls, dealing impressive magic damage and amplifying magic damage for your entire team. With a team of magic damage dealers, you can hit every square and wide maps on turn one. Failing to one-shot, he has some nice emergency measures, including damage and move mitigation, big charge fill, and debuff mitigation. Yoritomo, while theoretically strong, is sadly weakened by the lack of other units who can synergize in a wide magic form, essentially only having selfish damage dealers for partners. He has potential to shine in the future, but it's up to the life owners to stop riding that board wipe dick so hard. Genius! It's somewhat difficult to pin Shinya's use due to his widespread of middling effects. Unreliability is built in in many parts of his kit, between denying buffs, mitigating debuffs, dealing damage, and reducing damage. His board pull is the only reliable part of his kit that actually has general use. No reliability, no bitches, no use for farming. He's ultimately best as a slot filler in challenges, taking multiple slightly uncommon roles for a general purpose team without being remarkable in any. To his credit, being plain as Jane is his entire thing. Guru Makala. Look at this cutie! Like his big fat dick, I mean trunk? Guru Makala has fat damage at big range. It's not breaking any records, but magic damage dealers are always nice to have for their versatility in any map size. His thick amp, if you can somehow get it off, is somewhat reliable too. Enemies can't help but stop and stare occasionally because of his big dick energy. And Girmacala can take a few sucker punches too with some defense built in. Simple yet effective all around, but he's no main attraction. Donatomo! We've been waiting for a thousand years for another double hit restore, but this ain't it, Chief. Tanatomo is roughly designed to support a triple column set up from the back, but has some shaky rates that are only partially helped by moving him. His startling lack of any other utility besides refreshable combo makes him a questionable choice for all challenges but the ones explicitly requiring multiple hits. Uh, maybe Tanatomo can get some tips from McCroy on how to use combo without sacrificing everything else. Jacob! This missionary was dunked on for a while. For a good reason. You'd have to be blind not to see how mid he is. Garbo range, move dependence just to make this kit functional. Low rates, and good, but not great damage to justify all these other fails. Getting him to work with Oz was a hassle since he couldn't activate his board wide buff reversal conveniently. Like Jacob though, I have seen the light after being blinded all this time. As he actually works fabulously well with another all range utility unit, Duran Gotch. The all range multiplier coupled with buff reversal will bring damage to less than 1%, making this pair offer what may possibly be the strongest board wide defense in the game. He should have no problem building his charge as well being hit by everyone. Definitely a strong pick for massive defense with frequent offense, if you got the croc. If not, I pretend I do not see. Lame. Malnourished for years without a buff, Lay finally ate with his variant release and that big old fluffy belly of his. He has a strong staple diet of calm clearing, board white amp, and local amp. Just like his guts are filled with the white, sticky love of all of his simps, his kit is also filled with a cheesy gimmick of guts, letting him resist death constantly at low health through his near instant charge. He's packing two sets of succulents, besides his pecs and his payload, essentials, and gimmicks. This makes Slave a strong general pick for all content in the game, for farming and for challenges. Well, what's that? You're picking him just because he's hot. Damn! They really gave him everything, Riz included. Hecate. Like Ellie's Night Festival variant, Hecate arrives on stage with her own brand of specialized healing, with a dash of tankiness packaged in. She makes everyone into a healer and charge filler, albeit with some peculiar restrictions. Defeating enemies early in phase with Hecate on board will also restore your team an impressive amount. She also offers a more traditional Leannon like amp, moving behind units to make them nice and beefy. Like her jiggly. Tilly Bazongers, her kit is out of this world. Sipa 
Damn! Look at that art! It's clear Life Waters focus on that instead of Seepigly's kit, though. Infinite units are never allowed to be amazing, huh? Still, Seepigly is solid enough, acting as a Cotton Clear when moved, an Evasion Ally Tank and Healer on Miss, and a Board Wiper on his mid uptime charge. Not really amazing for anything, but that's what it means to be a jack of all trades. With the right partners, at least he's able to dip in a bit further into his offensive roles and other jacks in the game. Keep in mind though, unlike most other jacks, you'll need to be mindful with how you play with him. McCroy! Big damage the majority of the times, and extreme damage a good amount of times. McCroik is a rare example of a damage dealer with some unreliabilities that actually works. Due to his buff spread and buff steal, the potential for team building and mechanic chasing also skyrockets. Besides the amp, he also comes in with free defense mitigation, displacement resistance, and doubled attacks. All of which can be shared with his team. While still more than usable for farming, he's an outright prodigy in tall map challenges. This must be the power of youth! Boogie Man! Oh, Boogie Baby, what did they do to you? I get you're designed to be a sweet spot damage dealer, doing the most in the center of your magic range, but you're not even breaking 50,000 damage in your sweet spot? Why is one of your amps not guaranteeable, and why does the other amp only last three turns? I'm probably just spiced since that damage is enough to take care of any mob. You are the strongest damage dealer that can pierce all defense buffs in the game, so that's gonna count for something, right? That's just it though. You're clearly a unit life owners decide to make a compromise with, not giving you damage levels of Anvari, but also not giving you the utility of Nomad or Eta. It just stings knowing you're just another mix and match comp there and nothing more. It's okay, I still love you, Boogie Baby, even if Life Hunters doesn't. Lightning Round! The after school hero units have obviously not been infected since their last reprint, so we'll blast through these ratings real quick. Three, two, one, start! I'm so sorry. <laughs> We could have been great. Clear! Alright, let's move on to the last reprinting banner of the year. Arsalan! This oil daddy is channeling Akiha going in quite hard. He's a calm clear with a second chance at peak damage. Any more than that, and he'll switch to his emergency state, increasing his potential damage and gaining some supportive effects. But at a lower rate. It's almost as if Life Wonders designed him with the expectation he'd failed to clear. He's got damage counters, damage mitigation, mild inconsistency issues, and an awful attribute to boot. What new he does bring to the table is a meaty charge fall over time, which has great potential for challenges and possibly even farming. Though don't quote me on that. Get him or don't get him, I don't know, he's pretty alright, I guess. Ruin Boxy! He's quite the one trick pony, but I'd ride him happily. He. Calm clears! His damage is at its highest on turn 1, with all his amps and his charge ready. The damage only falls off from there though, now relying on his regular attack with amps marked with an expiration date. Most of this doesn't matter though, as long as you're clearing the quest within the first 3 turns. Some important calm clearing utilities are also packaged in, extend movement, and evasion piercing. Overall strong performing, but you can't say Life Wonders doesn't have a sense of humor with one aspect. If you don't own this unit and are planning to bring it from a randomly matched sport, <laughs> then Golden Brosty will tell you to go fuck yourself. Anyway, back in track. Yeah, he's nice and solid, just like his bazongas. Dang on! Like this game has stolen my life. Dagon life steals from multiple enemies. It seems like he's designed to be a carry, but frankly, he's pretty mid for that. Yeah, he can heal well over maximum HP every turn under ideal conditions. And yes, he can stall with his grip on the enemy movements. But as a tank, his ability to raise the durability of the rest of his team is weak. And as a solo carry, he lacks the damage longevity to shave the enemy down and the mitigation uptime to guard against heroic one-shot burst damage. On the flip side, if you do team build around him to mitigate damage and cover the missing team healing, he's potent at whittling the enemy away en masse while stalling. You do need to think about positioning though, so no, you can't do brain dead clears with him. And Bows, back the fuck out, because Dagon's only got eyes for nerds. Behemoth! 
Thank you all for attending this eulogy to our dearly beloved departed Ryota. Christmas Ryota did one extremely potent unique thing, guaranteeably filling an ally's charge halfway. Now, Bithemus can do it better in every way. What the lower team cost? He could have stopped there since Shiva's threats are already dominant on every type of quest, but like the glutton he is, he ate. He deals extra damage to enemies with a higher charge meter, helps the enemy charge up while denying their charge activation, and deals more damage as his own charge meter quickly fills. The most ridiculous part of his actual charge? At full snipe range, for each unit hit, he's packing over half a million damage? Uh, excuse me, what the fuck? Yeah, life partners overfed him, probably by his own request. The final verdict is here. Every banner is something worth pulling for, but but but, you'll need to know what exactly that worth is. The Snowfight banner is risky as the only worthwhile variants are the 5 stars. Jacob's best use is extreme damage mitigation with periodic big call damage. While Yori Tomo's is in wide map magic farming, and both of these now are only speculatively useful. If you had to pick only one of the banners, skip Snowfight. Things pick up with Jurassic Banner with strong variants all around. No one here is breaking new ground though, what's new is the combination of strong effects they offer. The marine banner is a bit lumpy in utility, but arguably has the strongest 4 star variant this year, Behemoth. If you want to land a broader selection of strong units, go for Jurassic, but if you want the most bang for your buck from a single unit, go for marine to hunt down Behemoth. That's all for now cuties, catch you next time!